Having a gun-shy dog would suck, and there's no reason for it. If you work with the dog when they're young, they shouldn't be afraid of loud sounds. You know, it doesn't really matter if it's a house dog or a hunting dog. It should not be afraid of loud sounds. It shouldn't be freaked out. Don't ever send that message to the dog like, you know, don't be startled at thunder. You've heard thunder before. Don't jump in front of the dog. Don't ever act like you're afraid of anything in front of the dog. Don't do it. And to make sure that the dog is not gun shy, I start out very early working with the dog. And one of the things that I do is uh, while the dog is, when the dog is eating, I'll take this, I'll take this cast iron pan and I'll hit it with the hammer real loud. And I'll, when I first do it, I, I'm away from the dog and as during the week I get closer and smack it real loud while the dog's eating. I'm not classically conditioning the, the dog. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to get the dog kind of habituated to loud sounds, knowing that loud sounds isn't a reason to freak out. Do you understand? I'm letting the dog eat so it's distracted. And then I'm making a, a loud sound. Charlie, come here. It's a nut. And then after the dog is really ignoring me hitting the cast iron pan, then I go to the, the 22 starter pistol. And same thing, I'll step back and I'll fire the pistol. And then during the week, I'll get closer till I'm right over the dog's head shooting the, the 22. Does that make sense? Don't overload the dog. Don't just like, oh, I'm just gonna, you know, shoot a, the, the 22 starter pistol. Do the metal first. Build the dog up. You don't wanna overwhelm the dog. If your dog is already gun shy, you need to contact a person that's qualified that can work with those kind of behaviors. Don't just do it because somebody says that they can do it. Make sure they've had years of ex experience with gun shyness and hunting dogs. Same thing with somebody that that's, uh, says that they're gonna cure your dog of like uh, thunder phobia. It would be the same thing. Make sure that the person sounds like they know what they're talking about. There's a lot of people out there they call themselves dog whispers. Be beware, beware. Don't don't trust somebody that's doing Caesar Milan shit. Don't do it. That's not dog training. It isn't. They're not they're not doing commands. So don't trust them and don't trust a positive reinforcement trainer. If your dog is having issues, the last thing you need is some dog trainer telling the telling you that you can be purely positive. It doesn't make for a healthy dog. What what animal doesn't learn by negativity. They do. They learn from both positive and negative. Remember that the B.F. Skinner's work, Operant Conditioning, was about both the positive and the negative and the alleviation of both. Don't get suckered in. If you don't want a gun-shy dog, start working with it when it's real early. Okay? I mean, I'm serious. Like, if you're, if you're gonna spend money on a puppy and, and you're just gonna think that you could raise the puppy like it's a cat or something, you know? Cats need training too, but if you're gonna raise the, the, the dog like you think that it doesn't need training, like serious training, like spending, putting some time in, you're a fucking idiot. It's absurd. I'm not fat. Why would Tonka be fat? He's a GSP. If, if, if my lab was this skinny, yeah, there'd be a problem. It'd be sick. It'd be dying. It's a GSP. They're supposed to be skinny, stupid. I don't want a fat GSP. Look, look, look at it. Look at the dog's bone structure. It's, it's supposed to be lean, dummy. Seriously, I can't stand it when people say, this is my dog and he's super healthy. You think he's supposed to be fat, don't you? Tonka and the puppy get along real good. If you're getting a young dog, you should definitely do this. Do what I say. It's easier than having a dog that's sound phobic, isn't it? Feeding the dog, start hitting the cast iron and work your way up to it. Then switch to this, switch to the 22. At a point, hopefully before he goes back, we'll, we'll have him on a shotgun too. But I, I don't know if we have enough time, but we're definitely, he's, he's, not, he's not going back gun shy. He's gonna, he'll be doing the shotgun. <laughs> he will. Tonka, look at Tonka. What an idiot. He's looking at a bird. Look, it's Charlie. 
It's Charlie. Look at her. Look at this. Look at this dog's little tail. Look at this cute little cute fucker. It's Charlie. Charlie in a box. Tonka likes Charlie. It's Charlie. Hey Tonka, it's me, Charlie. Do you want to play? Tonka, do you hate do you hate Trump? Hey, I do. Look at Tonka. So he's a lot of energy, aren't you, Tonka? Look at Tonka. He's telling me something. He's telling me something telepathically. He's tell he's telling me about the gray aliens. Really? Where are they? Are they coming tonight? He really? He he says somebody's stuck on the train tracks. That's what he's telling me. There's somebody stuck on the train tracks. It's a smart looking dog, right? Here. Look, it's Brewster, my frisbee dog. He's fucking awesome. He's dumber than dirt. He has Pika. This is a dog that was probably Brewster, sit. No, sit. Probably neutered when he was eight weeks old or something. He would have been an incredible athlete because he's a he's an incre he's being real naughty too. Look at him, Brewster, sit. But he would have been a good athlete because he's a good athlete and he doesn't have any balls. Do you, bro? Bro, here. I've been involved in animal rescue for years and not so much. As I was, I used to be involved heavily with uh, animal rescue and dogs, and it was emotionally exhausting for me. It was, and I, I can't tell you how stressful it was in dealing with the people that are involved in it. That was the most stressful, stressful part. And I still do animal rescue, meaning I'll, I help pigeons out every year, baby pigeons. Um, I, there was a time when I was helping squirrels out I, you know, somebody still called me in the city. They said, we have a baby squirrel. Can you take it to squirrel rescue? I would. And, you know, but the people that you have to deal with it, with dogs and cats, they're, a lot of them just make these poor decisions and they're not helping the situation. There's a, a, a huge group of these people that want to save the lost causes. Meaning, let's take the sick dog that needs two, three thousand dollars worth of medical care, and let's spend it on this one dog, okay? Not knowing how the dog is going to be after all the procedures and everything, because you don't really know what the dog's like because it's sick. So many times they, you know, you're just wasting fucking money. You're wasting money. That three thousand dollars that you spent on the lost cause could have saved how many dogs? It's ridiculous. My old girlfriend was telling me about how she's involved with an animal rescue group that this is what they do. They ship dogs from Korea and they're dogs that are supposedly going to be in the in the meat industry. Right. First of all, to place this importance on a dog like a dog is better than a cow or a pig is fucked up. OK. A dog, a horse, a, you know, they're, they're all like non-human. So they all sort of get the same rights. That's how it is. So you want, you want to have these dogs shipped over here from, you know, Korea because th they're going to be put down. They're, they're essentially going to be killed and they're going to be eaten. It just seems strange. That's cultural. Stay out of it. And how much did it cost for each puppy to be shipped over here or each dog? I asked her, she said a lot of money. That's the point. You're wasting money on these one dogs in Korea when there's dogs that are dying in New York State. Every every day. Are you kidding me? Look, it's Brewster the Pit Lab Mix. He's my dog. Aren't you, bro? He's good looking. He is. He's good looking. Brewster the Rooster. He can catch a frisbee.